Hey y'all, I decided to go ahead and review I May Destroy You because I'm watching it. Um, but I really want to make sure I put this up front. This is not anti Michaela Cole, anti, um, I guess, I don't know, continental Africans elsewhere outside of America. Cause I know we have this all African American versus Africans. I'm not part of that. <laughs> oh my word. I actually wish we could be honest enough and sit down and have conversations with one another. Cause my experiences have been totally different. But I believe most people now are walking into scenario like meeting you with baggage and they believe you're going to be like, oh, you're one of those African Americans. And I'm actually quite the opposite. <laughs> I tell people all the time, baby, I went to an HBCU. My experiences with Africans have been nothing but, I mean, born, bred, immigrated here, came as a student, never left, just arrived. I don't care. It's all been positive <laughs> until Help us all. Now, here's the thing. Um, I may destroy you. The concept surrounds consent. It may seem very vague if you're watching it, not knowing, have not read into this. I'm going to try and cover two episodes with each shoot because the first one just bothered me. I was like, yeah, hey, this isn't exciting. I don't see what's so great about this. Maybe there's an age gap or a generational divide or a cultural difference, I just don't understand and cannot relate. So for that reason, I don't like this so far, but everybody knows or should know. First seasons are some of the rougher ones, so you gotta give it a little more time, let it build, let it breathe like you would a wine. So we open with the lead character's Arabella. She hangs out with what seems to be a really close friend, Simon, and he has a wife. And they're connected on a threesome. Simon has money, lives in a high rise with his partner slash wife slash longtime girlfriend because they don't really interact like husband and wife, but they kind of on the skirts fight like they've been husband and wife for a few years and it started to turn stale. We see them go out. He invites her to meet him, his partner, and another guy. I forgot the guy's name. I meant to do this last night. So just bear with me, please. It's real sketchy how this review is going to come across. But I feel it's important to go ahead and get this done so we can have like the African-American perspective. So number one, shout out to Michaela Cole for being able to have a scripted show where she's doing everything, honey. I mean, that's the most impressive thing about this whole series. I don't know where you're coming from, but she is writing, produ executive producing, directing, and starring as the lead. And clearly she has some involvement in the casting because they have pretty good chemistry for what it's worth. Um, we realize she's having flashbacks. Like she's stumbling out of a bar that she went into with friends and no one's helping her. I can't relate. I'm not a drinker. I don't even do recreational drugs. So part of me questions, eh, is this where I cannot relate? Because, you know, even at that age, I didn't do such. 19, 21, 25, nope, nope, nope. Had no, <laughs> no interest for me. It was just like, what? No, nah, I'm good. I was always the designated driver, if anything. And luckily now, not luckily, graciously, when my friends complete references for me, yeah, I have to have like a professional license and in doing so you have to reach out to people who are not related to you and not former employers because they, se they separate and check with them on their own. But friends are real direct in saying that in my references when they're questioned about, you know, recreational drug use and drinking. And they're like, have you met Joyce? Yes, I had one friend who's an attorney who is very direct, very outspoken, said verbatim, have you met Joyce? I was like, what is that supposed to mean? I chose not to get offended. And I'm grateful he was honest to be like, no, Joyce don't play that at all. So anyway, moving on back to episode one. We see her stumble out of the bar and you can get the sense something happened or something should happen. We also learned that from as the people she meet along the walk, she must be impressive. She's written something. So I don't know if she's just social media popular or, you know, transcending popular. But before we get to the bar, I'm sorry, let me back up. She's with a guy in Italy. I want to call him Bellagio so bad, but that's the hotel in Vegas. Um, but it's really close, like Bellagio. Anywho. And she's wrapping up what should have been, I guess, a lover's weekend, but she should have been working and she really didn't. So like she said, I was eating four, pe four cheese pizza and your dick. What is I supposed to do? 
I appreciate her being honest when she's back in London talking to her friend T. And she's like, I just thought, you know, one more orgasm would bring me closer to the thing I wanted to write. And I get that. I get that pressure, even if you're not writing creatively, but you're writing for um, a treatise, a brief, oh my word, a client letter, anything. You're just looking for that motivation to get the information out. So it looks like the trip to Italy was well. The guy seemed real standoffish and it kind of put me in the fav like favored, meaning in my mind, I saw the parallels of girls, the TV show with Leah Dunham on HBO as well. And I was like, I don't like these scenarios where ladies are like begging or craving or look, I don't mind. Mm -mm. Be proactive, be aggressive, not begging. I'm an aggressive woman. I don't see myself as a beggar, but hell, if you call me on it, I bet you I'll snap it right together because I'm a whiner as well. And I know I'm giving too much of my personal information, but if it could be whining about anything, it does not have to be an amorous relationship. Trust me. If I feel like I'm not being heard <laughs> or I'm being sleep deprived or I'm annoyed for whatever reason, the pitch goes up and the whining just goes strong and I embarrass myself and I tell people, I know I heard it. Please work with me. I'm trying to do better. At any rate, she gets back to London. She hasn't written anything and the publishers are calling. They want to meet to discuss and they want her to have a proof submission to them by 6 a.m. Come to find out they pay for this trip she's had in Italy. T is her great best girlfriend, who's a struggling artist as well. She's always going on auditions. Apparently, they're just one-liners, and she's tired of it. She's being questioned about this um, hair campaign. I'm glad Michaela wrote this in, because it needs to happen. Not just in London, throughout Europe. Wherever you see extra melanin show up, the conversation of hair should be discussed when we talk about womanhood, because we are women. Um, T thinks the audition went horribly bad. They wanted to have her take her wig off after they asked probing questions of, what was the craziest thing you've ever done? Okay, is that your hair? No, it's a wig. Okay, well, can we see your hair uh, with notice? And I agree with her. Y'all, I'm on camera looking crazy to y'all because I got two little braids and I'm content. But Thursday, my hair will have to come out because I have to get on a call for work and I will not be looking tired and thrown to the side, I'm going to pick my full afro out. Yes, I will do that because I am past any probationary periods. And even I worry about such um, on any given day. But for the most part, they know me here. Um, yeah, and if they don't know me, I'm usually still confused whenever I show up with an afro and not like a wig, a weave or something. And it blows my mind. Like y'all have how many years and you still don't know what this fro looks like? Okay, whatever. So back to the show, episode one wraps weird, which is she's having flashback and has the question, what happened that night? But episode two opens with T questioning, how did you break your phone? You need to know how you broke your phone. She calls Simon, Simon doesn't answer. Simon is being real shady. Guess what? T calls Simon from her phone, Simon answers. At that moment, every spidey sense went off from okay he's just a crap friend to let you out and about drunk high because i was like are they doing drugs is that what that was i got my confirmation she did a bump of coke sorry i don't know these things until i'm standing on prosecution papers and then i gotta go figure out weights and that was back then not now at any rate she did some coke she took some drinks um simon is covering with the girl he's cheating with and coming off as it's like a threesome setup with his partner but she bounced out of it with a lie saying she had to go take care of her sick mother, but she wants to meet again. Simon then hooks up with the girl in front of Michaela and makes it real clear. Michaela's character name is Arabella. She goes by Ari. So it makes it clear to Ari, like, yeah, I'm cheating with this girl. And Ari's like, well, I like your partner's cooking. I can't do this and then go back and eat in front of her. He was like, she don't even like you anyway. She thinks you look ugly. I was like, look at <laughs> Michaela. That's really good to write that in. And I know some people may think her features make her ugly, but she genuinely reminds me of my best friend since high school. Um, with the high cheekbones, the thick lips, the um, broader nose, but then the, still the slimness, the super petite. And Leisha, shout out if you ever watch this, has always been super thin. Had to gain weight to go into the military. And now she worries about the little weight she carries. Child, 
everybody got their struggles. But either way, I've always thought she's gorgeous. And so now, you know, as we're adults, people come into their looks or adults start to appreciate the looks versus kids in high school who feel like, eh. But anyway, that's where we are with that. So he's with the treating girl. I thought the guy he was having as a third party was going to have something go across with Ari, but Ari's having flashback of some Caucasian man standing over her, raping her in a bathroom stall. I don't know how she doesn't see it as that, but I get it. She's trusting of the night before and her friend Simon. So she questions Simon. He steps out like, hey, I'm at work. Yeah, but look, you didn't answer from my phone, so we called from another phone. Were you with me last night through the entire night? Did you get me home? He lies. He hesitates. He stumbles. He says yes. Come to find out he did not. He took her to a certain part because he's like, well, how did I break my phone? And he's like, oh, you failed. Okay, well, how did I get this scar across my head where I'm bleeding from? And this is real important because she didn't know she was bleeding from her head until she sat in front of her publisher and tried to bang out, like, a chapter <laughs> within four hours. Had to turn it in at six and meet them at 11. And it was trash. It's like when people talk about um, writing on Adderall. You write a lot, but it's not of anything of consequence. It has no real substance. And that's what was missing. But with her bleeding from the head, they just dismissed her and said, we'll meet again. Okay, so I'm giving it all around. Y'all tell me what you think. Does Simon have something to do with his rape? I've only made it to episode four. Um, <laughs> this isn't spoilers, but it's more what are your thoughts? Because you may be watching it now because of the semi-quarantine we're on in America. Because you're getting ready to wrap up Prime or your HBO free, you know, subscription for a week. But at the end of the day, what are your thoughts in... How good of a friend is she to T? How good of a friend is Kwame to her? Kwame seems to be the openly gay young man who's her friend as well. But there's a Caucasian she's a roommate with. I'm actually shocked that this is based in London. No one said my flatmate. But anyway, that's that. So there's like a group of four. T, Kwame, Ari, and the Caucasian roommate. Simon apparently is another friend that we get to find out about. So in episode two, she goes to the girl that Simon is cheating with and asks her, hey, what's going on? And the girl is aloof like, you know, my roommates mentioned I might have been spiked, meaning roofied. And I was like, oh, okay. So you would think they're going to connect on this. Ari brings it up. Oh, I think I was as well. I'm sure I was. And the only connection we have between the two of us is Simon. And the girl goes off. Apparently, she's in love with Simon. And she is not just bumping uglies and passing time. I guess she plans on he'll leave his wife or his partner or whatever and come to me. She started talking real reckless and crazy, telling that girl, I've been screwing Simon for the last six months. and ain't nothing. I wouldn't trust him here. He's here every Thursday and doesn't steal from me. Stealing from you and rape, two different things. Stealing from you and sexual assault, two different things. Stealing from you and groping, two different things. Stealing from you and getting consent. Consent varies in capacity of what the person is trying to accomplish. Meaning they may be an honorable person and never touch your cash, but they are not honorable when it comes to fondling you, touching your body, or going into areas that is a no-fly zone, meaning no permission. That's why you have chargeable offenses. And that's why we have a scale of chargeable offenses from misdemeanors to felonies. And then we have levels within the felonies and levels within the misdemeanors. Here's why. Oh, girl, though, I can't remember her name. Completely bald. Um, she thinks she's hot. Hey, let's just give it to her, whatever. She's yelling from her, like, third floor perch of whatever apartment building she's in to scream at Ari. And Ari's like, don't worry. We're getting an Uber. I'm going away now. She's still talking trash. You can hear her as Ari's going away. She then crisscrosses the building to still come talk mess to Ari. And honey, that's when my patience would have been touched. And that's what I said. Yep, there's a cultural difference there. Because I would have went back, baby. You ain't got to worry. We're going to finish this. And it won't be a polite conversation anymore. Well, they wrap the episode with um, Simon's partner shows up to the girl's door. I guess she's eager to like, hey, let's hook up. Because the girl made sure to bring that up. Simon's been screwing me. It's his partner who wants to eat me. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she's like, I can't do this tonight. I just can't. And shuts the door in her face and walks off. I was like, child, this is why you can't do threesomes. Right here. All this attitude. See, I would have snatched you. Even bald head, I would have snatched you. No, I don't think it's physical assault. Because I would have been, you know, in the love, in the spirit of love. Let me hug you harder. We can call it what we like. I don't know what to tell y'all. 
But I can say between episode one and two, it's starting to unravel to Ari. She's been sexually assaulted. How so? Because people finally, she went with Kwame to the police um, inspector. Pretty sure is what it's going to be called in London. And has to recall by answering questions. And as the inspector lady is explaining, his he may not be tall. His nostrils may not be large. It's a peripheral. It's a vision. It's a balance of how you're at the bottom and they're over you. Because in her flashback, she feels like, there's this guy in his four walls and he's blocking her exit. But somehow she never tells anybody he's pounding and grunting in a sexual manner. She brings it up as she's going up the stairs explaining it's a tea and she's saying, look, I've been awake for 36 hours. I do know that can happen with coke. I got to know a few Estonians who use the coke to stay awake <laughs> to get work done and help us all. I don't, I can't relate. I want no parts of it. At any rate, her friend T puts her to bed, hangs around. Bellagio calls on the laptop a few times. She closes the laptop so there's no worry. Just focus and go to sleep is the whole goal. I'm grateful when she's stumbling around the streets of London, high or drunk. People who know her from her writings, you know, chronicles of an aggravated or annoyed millennial, put her in a cab, send her home. She had no idea how to get to the bus stop. She had no idea how to get where she needed to go. But we could see earlier, she got around just fine. So she literally got called out by a friend to be set up by that friend. Because she had every intention of staying in and writing because she knew she had a meeting with the publisher the next day. So that's episodes one and two. Tell me what you expect, what you think of Simon, what you think of T, Kwame. What do you think of Ari? What do you think of Bellagio? How do you feel about her going back and forth to Italy? to eat four cheese pizza and dick and what does she think is going to come of it um would you entertain that i mean it's a long distance relationship you can hook up right in town you don't have to go back and forth to italy to hook up with people but hey it is a nice place it is um the gentlemen are quite direct there um there's no hesitation on when they flirt with you and how they flirt with you and even when they approach you um because when we were in rome and i went from northern italy to southern italy but I had to stop a few times because I got really sick um, in Milan. So we had to, you know, stay like two or three extra days there. And in Rome, my family could not believe like how direct the men were <laughs> and how often I got hit on and why I was getting hit on and the things that were being provided. So I can tell you it's a place I would happily go to. I know there was a reality show at one point about some sisters living in Italy and dating. Honey, mm -mm. I couldn't have did that show, but I would put it to shame. Yeah, 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 I would. Simple as that. It's just, um, I like direct people, clearly. With that being said, I'm still particular and I like to filter and have my standards. But all in all, I think it's a nice place for what it's worth. But I also learned Alfredo, as I know it, as an African-American sitting in America. So, and as an American, basically, nine generations deep. Baby, I like Alfredo that I can find in the Italian restaurants in Chicago. I like Alfredo I can make at home myself. They do not have Alfredo as we have in America. And I learned that is an American invention. Ooh, and I won't ever, 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 ever have it again. Yes, I had to put some A's on that ever. Have it again in Italy, no matter what parts of Italy I'm in. With that, let me know your thoughts. I hope this helps somebody find the show so we can keep talking about it. I hope Michaela keeps growing. I never saw her in chewing gum. I only saw the advertisements, and I appreciated her direct approach. Um, she told the one guy, yeah, give me your number. You're just going to give me your number. And she gave him the phone. Put, put, my, put your number in the phone. Don't worry, I'll just do it for you. And he seemed to be genuinely caught off guard. So... I appreciate the diversity so far. Yeah, something I can be, I can relate to that. Um, I can appreciate the struggle of wanting to, like T said, I want to do what I want to do, but really get paid. Like, yeah. And I adore the music. The soundtrack is popping. And I don't even like French rap, but they have some Italian rap that's coming up. They, you, they pull back out of America quite often for the rap. And I appreciate that. But also some of the soul, some of the acoustic beats are there. So, with that being said, three and four coming shortly.